Hey, welcome back. This is a video tutorial on the logix tip. We're going to go over the options of the logix tip, and we're not going to go over logix itself. So please check the video description for um, a link to a video by video series by a business lawyer who goes over logix from a more beginner's point of view. Once you've caught up with the beginnings of logix, come back here and you can find out how the tip works. I will be doing a beginner series on logix soon, but uh, for now, here is how the logix tip works and all the options on it. This is a request from Litalia on Discord. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Thank you for the request. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is spawn a fresh logix tip. I have one here, but it's not fresh. I want to show you a fresh one. So when you first spawn a logix tip, you'll see here that it starts with three dashes on the top, and that means a node isn't selected. So if I double press with the trigger, nothing happens, and that's because I need to select a node first. So if I open up the context menu and go to node browser, I can then select a node. Before we select a node, however, this uh, location marker button at the top here will parent um, the logix node menu to you so that when you move, it follows you around. That's good to keep an eye on if you're moving around through a world. I'm going to go into the actions folder and select the right node here and spawn that in the world with a double trigger. And you'll see it spawns the node and the name of the node appears above the uh, logics tip here. I can then change the node, so we'll change to plus plus and I can spawn another node. Now there is a shortcut which I find very handy and it saves a lot of time, which is if the node already exists in the world, you can point at it with your laser here and briefly press secondary. So you'll see how it says plus plus right now. Point at right, press secondary briefly, and you get a right node. With the right node on the top here, we can point at plus plus, briefly push secondary, and we'll get a plus plus. That saved me hours. That's it for the node menu. We're going to move on to packing and unpacking now. I have some setups over here to help me out, and we're going to go over them. So uh, here I have a simple piece of logic which just adds one and one together to get two, and we're going to pack it into this box. This isn't a tutorial on uh, the detailed parts of packing, but just go over, again, the menu options on the tip. So we're going to first of all set the packing route. That's where the logics gets packed into. So we're going to go up to the box here. We're going to grab the box, the word box, and you'll see it says box here. We're going to open up the context menu and go to set packing route. And now you'll see it says plus plus and then box in pink. And that lets you know where the logics is going to be packed. So if I now aim at the um, logics here and I hold secondary, a circle will go around the logics tip. And then when I let go, it will pack into the box here. That's the packing route. Now we'll cover unpacking. If I grab the box again, I open up the context menu and I go to reveal, it will unpack the logics into the world. Now reveal will reveal everything beneath the object that you've selected, so don't choose something too high in your world hierarchy. Like if you're creating a building, don't select the entire building because that would re reveal all the logics in the entire building. That's uh, packing and unpacking. We're now going to cover the traversal options. So over here I have a specialized setup which is de uh, used to demonstrate traversal, and I'm going to go ahead and set the box here to the packing route. And oh, there we go. And now I'm going to cover it. So here we have a setup with a right, two right nodes that point to a float variable, and the float variable is set to two. I can set it to one with this right node and two of this right node. You'll see here that the right nodes have a pink arrow that comes out and goes into the float node, and that there's actually two arrows here. This is important because it's uh, what the traversal option is looking at. With traversal set to the default, which is break at other nodes, when I point it at the top right node and pack that one, only the top right node will pack and the bottom one will stay unpacked. To pack the bottom one, I have to aim at the bottom right node and pack that too. You'll notice it also doesn't pack the float variable, and that's because the float variable is after an arrow, and break at other nodes stops when it encounters an arrow. So I'm going to go ahead and pack there. I will now reveal the logics and we'll change to the other traversal mode. So now we've got the logics back out. I'm going to change to traversal complete and I'm going to again select the top node and pack it and you'll see the entire setup disappears. That's the difference. To show you once more, I'm going to reveal, set traversal back to break other nodes, go to the bottom part and pack just that right node, change traversal back to complete pack the top right node here, and you'll see the float variable goes to. So it stops other arrows. You'll notice arrows a lot with the right nodes and also with slot references and sometimes uh, logics interface cards. Wherever you see that arrow shape, 
um, to show you again, wherever you see this arrow shape, whatever color it is, that's where the traversal will stop. This is useful if you have a setup that writes the same variable or logics which ties to the same value. Um, say, for example, this is a calculation that's done in one place, and this is a calculation done in the other place, but the result needs to go to the same variable. It might be wise to pack them separately to keep a separation of concerns and keep your logics tidy, and that's uh, what Traversal allows you to do. That's it um, for the Traversal option. We're now going to go across to a Lexi V4 by um, LexiDoll. Thank you so much to uh, them for providing this model for everyone to use. It's very popular in many social platforms. I picked it because it just has a bunch of shape keys and for this next part, it needs shape keys. Um, so when we open up the uh, menu here, we'll see that there is an extract option. It's currently set to interface. Extract interface will um, pick out an entire interface of a component. So here for the simple away indicator, I can grab that and I can see simple away indicator in the blue text and I can push secondary and I'll get a whole interface for it with all the properties on the interface. But for blend shapes, you'll notice that that doesn't work. So blend shapes are actually registered under the skinned mesh renderer. So if I grab that and pull it out and push secondary, I don't get any of the shape keys here. I don't get any of the blend shapes. I just get some of the top properties. To get the blend shapes, I need to use a different extract mode. So I can open up the context menu and go to extract and change it to drive node. And now I can pick a shape key. We're going to pick blep and I can grab blep, which will display weirdly as a piece of text, but that's fine. And then I push secondary and you'll see I get one of these arrows out. With these arrows in play, I can then enter a value for the shape key. Here's one. And now the shape key will be one. I can also connect these um, uh, arrows to other logic nodes. So here I have plus and I can wire it straight into the arrow. And I can say one plus one. And it will set the shape it will set the shape key to two. Important thing to note here is that uh, there's a lot more to shape keys. I go over how to drive them a little bit that involves this setup in another tutorial called uh, driving shape keys of logics. I think I'll link it in the video description as well. There'll be a lot of links down there for this one um, which should go over this more. That's it for extract drive node. Next, the last one is extract reference node. This does kind of the opposite of um, the extract drive node. I haven't actually found a use for it because it kind of misbehaves a little bit or doesn't um, behave how I would expect. If I go here and I grab the hide tier shape key, which is already set to one with extract reference node set and I push secondary, you'll see I get the opposite arrow, which is uh, here and it comes out and it renders as this weird sort of uh, beige data type and that's because instead of a float it's actually a sync float and i'm not sure how you convert that into a regular number for example if i take this arrow over to the plus and i try and plug it in here it won't work i thought it was a reference and for references you sometimes need to use the arrow node to dereference it into an actual value but that just does weird stuff. So I'm not actually sure what the extract reference node uh, section is for. I've never used it. I wouldn't recommend using it. Um, ask ask an NAS team member when you find them and maybe they'll be able to tell you. That is, I believe, all the options for the logic tip. Um, there are quite a few that we basically use every day. And then the traversal one, I don't think I've ever used, but now I know how it works, uh, which I researched for this video. I may end up using it. That's it for the logic tip. I will be doing all the other tips. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.